All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Passive Cash Flow Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Fragnito, and we have an interesting guest here, a family office specialist, a real estate expert who has a ton of years of experience working with family offices and helping them preserve and build their wealth. We have DJ Van Curren on the show today. How are we doing today, DJ? Good. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Absolutely, absolutely. So you have an, a very extensive bio, uh, too long for me to remember all the things you've done, all the amazing uh, family offices and companies and uh, products you, you've uh, worked on there. So give us a little background about your experience and your uh, track record here and everything you've uh, done in the family office space here. Yeah, so um, I've worked for a number of families. Uh, first was one of the largest developers out of Mumbai. We were in New York City buying luxury hotels and condos. That was sort of my first experience into this space. And then when I moved to Denver, I worked for my first billionaire directly. Then got head by the Heyman family of Giorgio Perfume, Giorgio Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. uh, then ended up, after we stabilized that portfolio, ended up working with one of the owners of a major league baseball team. Oh. And um, now, you know, we focus in on um, an invite only consortium that we have that we invest on behalf and, and um, everything is um, strictly for the last eight years, nine years, family offices and real estate don't mm -hmm. don't touch any other investment type. Uh, and so I'm a little biased when it comes to real estate, but I believe that that's, you know, that's truly where you build your wealth and, and um, pres preserve your wealth as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you're talking to a real estate guy here who's built and preserved my own wealth and helped... Uh, over 100 people do that. So, of course, we're both uh, pro real estate. But, you know, uh, before we get into the real estate and uh, what we do here and give our opinions on the market and everything going on there, which we'll get to, um, you know, the word family office is uh, kind of a buzzword these days. <clears throat> you know, over the last uh, four or five years, at least, I've been seeing it more and more in the fundraising space and the real estate space. And uh, I feel like it wasn't that popular, uh, you know, or at least uh, such a common word a while ago. And I know family offices themselves have just flourished uh, now. And uh, it's kind of confusing. What is a family office? Is it just a wealthy uh, individual or wealthy family? And where is the line in the sand that you actually are a family office? So uh, in your opinion, you know, what, what, what is a family office? Well, <clears throat> what you've said is is very true, Aaron. I mean, over the last two to three years, the name's really been uh, used more and more. I think it's been misused more often than not. Ah, yes. Um, and that is primarily because people are are trying to use the family office, quote unquote, as a way to raise money. Um, but that comes back to, well, what's really a family office? Well, the real definition of a family office is worth $250 million or more. Mm -hmm. You're probably not going to have a CIO until you uh, have assets of 800 to a $1 billion. Just doesn't economically make sense. And it's not a business. It's not a company that's investing um, with employees, just like a regular corporation. It's actually there to tend to the wealth um, of uh, that's been created by the initial patriarch or matriarch. And so you, you've got a hard side and a soft side of the business is what I call. And the hard side is, is, is the investing, right? Right. And that is to where you're going to invest, how you're going to invest. The average returns about 7% in a family's portfolio. Wow. And, and that is to make sure that that money's being put to good use in the proper way. Mm -hmm. uh, and that it's also going to be there for future generations. The sure. soft side, which is probably as, if not more important, is dealing with all those other issues like making sure you have family governance, you have investment policy statements, you have family councils. Um, you have, you know, sometimes that, that family office pays the bills for all the families. They deal with the jets. It's all specifically just for that family for all the planning, tax, and everything, and investments there. So another way I like to explain it, which is an easy way to, to, I think, that people can recognize, is that when somebody's saying a family office, you have to look at that and say, is the check that they would be writing, first, are they raising money? If they're raising money, they're not. that's not a family office. <laughs> right? It's okay if 
if uh, you know it's family owned, it's not the family office because right. once again, it's only family members that's caring for. Mm -hmm. um, but if they are investing money, the question is, is, is that check coming from the personal account or the business account? Mm -hmm. If it's coming from the personal account, yeah, it, it's probably legit. If they say, oh, it's coming from our investment company because we just raised a hundred million dollars, it's mm -hmm. definitely not a, a family office. Mm -hmm. And so those are a couple of the, the ways I think you really uh, make it um, distinctive of mm -hmm. what's different. Sure. And, um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people say they're, they're, they're family offices and, and they're not. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it has been known more and more for sure. At People's Capital Group, we help you invest in real estate. Build your wealth by owning professionally managed apartment buildings in the northern New Jersey market. We want to show you how owning real estate is attainable, even for the busy professionals that don't have the time or experience investing in real estate. Now, we only work with select people who are serious about building wealth. So find out if you qualify at peoplescapitalgroup.com. Yes, I do find a lot of the family offices I meet at these family office events are actually RIAs that maybe have done well, you know, very successful RIAs and, and with a, a large amount of wealth themselves, but they always seem to be raising capital um, and then helping to put it to work. And that's fine. We work with RIAs and, and family offices and, uh, you, you know, so we're not uh, opposed to teaming up with RIAs, but it is it is a very uh, blurred line out there, you know, especially at a lot of these events where we're all kind of pounding the pavement and working long hours and connecting with people at these events and having a good time. But uh, it, it seems like uh, a lot of the family offices I'll meet will say, hey, I'm a family office and we're here to raise capital for this new investment opportunity. And they'll start pitching me on their investment opportunity. And uh, I'll be like, well, you know, as a sponsor, we we pay a lot a lot of money yeah. to uh, it's not fair. Yeah. It's not, it's not yeah. fair whatsoever for you. And because they said they were a family office, they probably got in for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. And we're, we're paying the money to have that right. event and the meals and the experiences. And, and I do feel like sometimes it's not, it's not fair. So you have to pick and choose which events you go to and who you spend your time speaking with. But, um, you know, then again, there are legitimate family offices there and, you know, it takes some, a few goes, a few, uh, events and experiences and, and dozens of conversations to kind of be able to pick through the uh, that fine line and, and know if you're speaking to someone who's actually looking for legitimate uh, allocating their capital and putting it to work and, and good operators and, and good investment opportunities, or if you're speaking to someone who's there kind of doing the same thing you're doing and trying to raise capital for their opportunities. Um, but usually I can determine that pretty quickly and uh, try to focus on actually speaking with family offices, looking to allocate capital, you know, so. Yeah. And you, and you bring up a point, by the way, when you said RAAs, um, that that's the other thing you have the multifamily office, right? We were talking about a single family office, the multifamily office deals with that hard and soft side, just like I said, but instead of one client or one family, they might have 10, 11, 12 families. Right. right? Mm -hmm. But, they're dealing with both sides of the equation. If they're only doing investments, they're probably an RIA, just mm -hmm. like you said, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, all of the investments we've made um, has been through relationships from conferences we've attended because mm -hmm. it's an easy way to meet a lot of sponsors and mm -hmm. to sort of, in a, you know, in one area because there are so many of them, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. But, um but we have, you know, we're having an event at the, the, the Family Office Real Estate Institute, and we're only going to have probably 30, 35 families. And I'm personally screening them all. And I bet you I'm at the number of 20 that I said, you're not a family office, you're really a sponsor. And so I've had to send back and say, um, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. a 10. Well, I, I appreciate that as a sponsor, right? Because sponsors, you know, we're running a business here. We're investing a lot of capital to uh, have the opportunity to speak and connect with family offices. And it is frustrating when you go to an event and it's a very uh, blurred line. So as a sponsor, I appreciate that. And that that's interesting. 
Um, so for people out there trying to, so we understand now what a family office is, a high net worth family, minimum 250 million net worth. And, uh, the way they create that wealth is always interesting. I always love hearing their stories on how they obtain that wealth. Um, but let's talk more about now actually connecting with family offices. So these are obviously high net worth individuals uh, now looking, uh, they're, they're pitched so many different opportunities, right? They, they know so many different people and have the ability to invest in, in many different things, ideally, right? How does a family office or as a sponsor, as an operator, how do I connect with them and, and build a relationship and actually uh, convert that to an, an investment down the road? How, how does that process work? Well, first and foremost, when you meet them, don't ask for money. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that's the biggest, I guess, problem that gets created instantly because they're like, hey, I paid for this uh, event and mm -hmm. I'm just going to go pitch my deal. Yeah. That's the worst thing you could do because it's all about relationships because they want to know who you are and, um, and get to know about you a little bit more. And, you know, people that we all have issues with our family at some point in time, whether you have some uh, things riffraff with either your siblings or your parents or your uncles, aunts, cousins, mm -hmm. whatever. Sure. Well, now add six more zeros to that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it, it, you know, there's a lot of stuff they're dealing with and they are being asked all the time. Mm -hmm. So the first one is, is just don't go in asking for a check, literally find out about them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe where the wealth was created or you get to know them a little bit. Um, the other thing, too, is don't assume, and, and I say this because I made the same mistake in my first three months, I assumed that if they had all this money, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars, they're obviously intelligent, they're smart, they're successful. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, they're going to understand everything. Well, mm -hmm. the reality is, is they've spent the last 40 years in maybe chemicals or, or tires. You ask them about investing into a chemical, they're going to tell you right away, right? But now they have all this money after doing that for 40 years, they don't understand um, real estate and venture capital and private equity and hedge funds, right? And, right. and the stock market. Mm -hmm. And when you look at venture capital, it's not just venture capital, some people spend their whole life in, but it's also in middle market healthcare and not sure. just middle market healthcare, but a specific, you know, even more focused. Mm -hmm. And so you need to realize that, um, that yes, they are great, talented people, but don't assume that they're going to understand everything. So, so make sure that you don't talk above their understanding because right. regardless of how much money they have, even if it's a dollar, if you start confusing somebody, they're just going to, they'll move on, right? Mm -hmm. And they won't understand um, and, and won't trend with you on what you're saying. So mm -hmm. a relationship component of it and um, also just being aware making uh, uh, you know a friend and get to know him a little bit. Um, and then when you do talk, keep it as simple as you can. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I find that's that's so important. You know, that we're all human beings at the end of the day, right? And trust is the most important thing. And that's built over time uh, by, you know, being being a transparent person and kind of um, being consistent in, uh, in, in trying. And also I find with the family office asks like, what, what can I do for you? You know, what can, how can I make your, your life easier? You know, um, maybe, uh, i I know a family office where I can help with mentoring their son in some ways, you know, who's kind of learning, wants to learn real estate or, um, different needs. And, and it is interesting learning the family dynamics too. It does, you know, more money, more problems they say, right. So that tends to be the case, but that's great. Uh, great feedback there. Thank you for that. And, um, so then when it comes time, so, so building, build a relationship, understand what their needs are. Uh, don't uh, kind of in some ways speak in layman's terms, at least easy to understand terms, especially if they're not in that industry that you are an expert in. And then uh, when is the right time to pitch a deal? Or if there is, is there ever, are you ever pitching a deal? Are you waiting for them to ask you about essentially what you have? You know, this this is the most sensitive um, thing um, when it comes to with families, mm -hmm. right? Because the reality is, is, you know, if you paid to be in an event, you find a family, well, you're there to raise money. I mean, right. that's what it is, right? Sure. Um, and, and whether it's you need the money 
today, not five years from now, yeah. although it'll be nice five years from now. So you do have to take a long-term perspective, but you know, one of the things it can be as easy as, you know, if you meet them earlier in the day at the event and you see them later on and you say, Hey, you know, we're working on a deal. Is it okay if I give you a call later and just let you know about it? Mm -hmm. And if they say yes, mm -hmm. that door is wide open. Mm -hmm. Right. And if they, um, and then it's now you're full on to next time you call them, pitch them and you're going to be focused based upon that conversation. They gave you the okay to chat, mm -hmm. make sure you get their information, obviously. Right. But it, it's really as simple as that to say, Hey, we do have some stuff. I think you might like to take a, a look at that would be of interest possibly. Mm -hmm. um, is it okay if I follow up with you? Yeah. And that's it because now it's like, Okay, if they say yes, they open the door, like I said. And also, you're not trying to shove something down their throat. They know that you're there and why you're there, mm -hmm, right? Sure, yeah. But I would rather, personally, if, if I'm that family, I would rather, you know, ha have a follow-up call with you than mm -hmm. somebody that was all over me at an yeah. event, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that and that's important. You know, give, give the space, you know, have that kind of... Um, that process of, you know, building a relationship first, asking what they need and listen to their needs too. You know, that's what I find. If a family office says, oh, I, I only invest in venture capital and, you know, uh, startup companies and, and venture, you know, then I, you know, biotech or something, then I don't really bother them. Right? I mean, I'm a real estate guy. I offer, you know, core, core plus value add real estate in North Jersey. I'm a very particular thing that we offer that we specialize in. We're vertically integrated and you know, that that's uh, what we specialize in. So if they're in to biotech, then, you know, it's great, great meeting you. Maybe I can learn from your experience in business and wealth creation, but I don't, I don't have what you're seeking, you know, but maybe I know someone that that is. Well, that, that's, what, that's exactly right. what I was going to say is yeah. that mm -hmm. when you're at these events, um, get to know those people, right. because if they say something, you're like, you know what, you need to talk to so-and-so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, once again, you're the value add. You're there. Mm -hmm. Now, keep me in mind for real estate, mm -hmm. but you should talk to so-and-so. Sure. And I'll, let me go introduce you or it, I'll put you guys in touch if you want me to. Mm -hmm. And once again, they say yes. Well, there you go. And now you also have somebody else that's a fan of yours because you you help them too, right? At People's Capital Group, we help you invest in real estate. Build your wealth by owning professionally managed apartment buildings in the northern New Jersey market. We want to show you how owning real estate is attainable, even for the busy professionals that don't have the time or experience investing in real estate. Now, we only work with select people who are serious about building wealth. So find out if you qualify at peoplescapitalgroup.com. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that, that's important. You understand what their needs are, you know, try to be a connector of everyone because also with real estate, you know, people might say, Oh, I don't invest in real estate or something, but then, Hey, your, your biotech investment hits it big. You're probably going to want to put some of that capital into a stabilized asset class that produces tax returns and cash flow. You know, oh, I guess real estate's pretty good for that. So, you know, it's uh, yeah, always a good, uh, good thing to have that, that relationship in place with a good real estate guy. But, um, um, all right. And then as far as uh, meeting family offices, so you told me you said something interesting that I, I didn't really expect was that you found most of your good operators through uh, these events, these family office events that us sponsors pay so much to attend to to meet uh, family offices and RIAs. So that's interesting. So you found most of your uh, sponsors that you ended up investing in at these events? Um, all of them. It was by way of, of, of the events and and. But now for, for me, we were very clear on what we were looking for. So if I met somebody and I'm like, you know what, I, we need somebody in the Northeast and I met you, I'm going to be like, hey, you know, give me your card, give me a call. So, so we've been very specific. Unfortunately, there are people that go there that might be a family office, but they're just going to go type mm -hmm. of a deal. They're not really looking. Yeah. But what is great about it, as I mentioned before, is that you have so many people in one area. Mm -hmm. um, and if you see that person again at another event, it just builds, continues to build that awareness, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and so it is important that you continue to do that. But yeah, all the money that um, 
I mean, it's funny, we had, um, I sat on a panel for one conference uh, with somebody and um, he was the principal of this industrial company. And I think two years, two weeks later, we're writing a check for two and a half million. I mean, it's just, it's pretty, wow. that we, we saw what we were looking for. We knew what we wanted and yeah. So um, to me, it's the best place to find opportunities because they're all in one location. I don't have to sit, go out there. But with families too, that which is an important thing, that if you take your time and your patient, they will refer you to other families. Right, right. And they will also refer you other deals, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Other other sponsors. Yeah. So um, that's important as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and that that's a lot of the family offices you meet at these events are master networkers. And you see them, you know, at events uh, multiple times. And so I, I like to go to also kind of like the same, like fo focus on, although this, this next month, there's so many different events. I'm going to iConnections, Opal, IMN, uh, you know, so it's I'm kind of spreading the love fact, right, which is more of an RIA based event. But um, I find that when you go to the same type of same brands, you know, a few times in a row, you tend to see a lot of the same people. And that's a great way to build those relationships. You know, they'll see you uh, at the same ones or like I would go to Opal and then I go to Jaboy, which is like the next day, to, you know, in the city over and they'd, they'd see me again there, maybe speaking and they'd say, oh, you know, wow, the Aaron's Aaron's a lot of these things. He's everywhere. And that that's do you find that's a good way to to build that relationship? Yeah, I think. Not only um, is it a, a good way, but also um, I've actually, over the last nine years, I've created some really, really good friends mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. from going to these events. Right. But mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you, you get very sharp people, very successful people, incredible stories. You know, um, I mean, a lot of people that built their business from the ground up to hundreds of millions of net worth. So just an really incredible people in one room, you know, and that's uh, one of the nice things about having a higher ticket price to, to get in, of course. Um, now, do you find as a sponsor, you know, a lot of times I just, um, I just attend, right? I just pay the cost to attend because obviously running uh, a business, you want to keep an eye on your costs. Um, and if I sponsored every event I went to, uh, probably be a, a quarter million dollars easily by uh, June. So um, do you find that the cost to sponsor is is worth it for these events or just kind of uh, attending, getting your foot, you know, getting in the room is is the most important thing? Well, remember, I've, I've only gone as either a representative of a family office or right. um, as an allocator, both, mm -hmm. you know, from that perspective. Sure. Um, you know, I, I think that the biggest thing is if you are going to sponsor, you need to have that consistency. You need mm -hmm. to keep in front of people because you will see a lot of the same people. Mm -hmm. But people wouldn't continue to sponsor if they weren't seeing a benefit is the right. way I look at it. So as long as people are benefiting from it, they'll continue to come. But mm -hmm. if they're um, if they're not, they're not going to come back or they've taken a short sighted approach to trying to get into that market. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, and then uh, let's jump over to real estate real quick and we'll wrap up here. So uh, DJ, uh, you're a big real estate investor. You invest in um, multiple markets. Um, what are what are you seeing out there right now in the marketplace? You know, I think we're, we're, we're going upon a time in, in history where there's gonna be an opportunity to make an awful lot of money. Mm. And that has to do, um, primarily in the multifamily space. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because um, people were were raising money saying, okay, we're going to buy at a five cap. We'll get interest only at three and a half cap. On stable, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do it at four and a quarter cap. <laughs> well, what's happened is now they've stabilized and they can't get a loan at four and a quarter, but six and a half. And now they have negative leverage. They, they don't have the ability to make the payments. And then you also had a saturation of the market where the occupancy levels went up, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so there's a there's a great opportunity for that. I mean, there's probably about $3 trillion of loans that are coming due. 
and not only multifamily, the biggest is multifamily, but other property types as well. Sure. Um, and, you know, if you're a believer in office and you feel long term, that's going to be OK. I mean, the people that buy today will be will be, you know, down the road, things turn around, they'll be making hundreds and hundreds and billions of dollars because you can get them at such a discount now. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that, you know, I've been saying this for a couple couple years now, but I don't see a recession happening for us on the real estate side till 27, 28. And oh. so we have a couple more years available, but then once that comes in at 27, 28, that's when the real heyday is happening. So we're right in the midst of, of um, change, both politically and um, hopefully interest rates will come back down here a little bit. But I, I just think that it's, it's uh, you need to be a little bit more prudent on the opportunities that you're looking at, regardless of the property type. Mm. That's interesting. So I, I haven't heard that perspective of a, a recession that late into this uh, decade. You know, most of us are saying, oh, if a recession was going to come, it would have happened already, or it's going to happen, you know, in the next few quarters into uh you know, they say uh, survive 25, right? And then so we're kind of expecting 26 and 27 to be better years, get the election over with, interest rates come down. Um, so what what is your reasoning for expecting a recession in 27, 28? Because you can go back 250 years in the US, the UK and Australia and real estate runs in 18 and a half year cycles. Mm. And we'll go, it'll go for seven, it'll come down for a little bit, then it'll go back up. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, you know, you go back to, um, you know, back to when we had the recession and you just multiply and it really comes out to be 2026 if you go back 18 years. However, um, we had COVID. And so I look at that as a year, year and a half that we just lost. Right. So I'm like, add that on because yeah. it was sort it was weird right it was it was a black swan yeah sure. um, and so when you look at that and if you look at the numbers historically that's exactly what's happened and mm. it's continued to go at that level um now we do have you know the demand for apartments is much greater than it was before but the the issue you have is is whenever there's a demand then mm. developers are going to build 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 till you get to the point where there's too much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it's going to affect the occupancy levels and, and, and everything else. And, and it's just yeah. a natural progression of greed, but it's, that's how it works. And, and so, um, you know, I've been saying this for about five, six years now, and I, I still hold to it. And wow. so I, um, that's where I, that's where it's going to be a great opportunity. So if mm -hmm. you're supposed to exit in those years, Mm -hmm. then I would see, just be ready to, to hold on a little bit longer right? and build up some cash and, and you could really benefit from that. Interesting. Interesting perspective. Well, I'll have to look more into that myself. I, I, I haven't heard that perspective. So you normally hear, oh, there's a shortage of housing. You know, they're not building enough of it. There's more uh, demand than supply. Um, I know housing starts are starting to pick up again, but they definitely froze over the last year and a half as rates skyrocketed. Um, but you know, that's a reasonable argument If housing starts to pick up again, then we will have more supply hitting the market over the next 18 months. And then, uh, you know, you're also kind of having this slow tidal wave of, uh, defaults possibly happening, you know, if, if the values don't pick up nicely and rates don't come down quickly. So we'll see. And then who the heck knows who the next uh, president is and what the changes might be there. That's a, you know? so, yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a big part too. Mm -hmm. of who, who, and, and, you know, we talked about a month ago, I'd be saying, you know, it looks like Trump's going back in office today. I'm like, it looks like Kamala might be in office. So we just don't know now. Right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Head for the hills. Yeah. All right. Well, that's um, that's interesting there. So, um, well, we'll see. Time will tell if your theory is right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I sure hope that it better be the case because I've, I've been public on this and so many <laughs> conferences and on so many of these uh, interviews and stuff like that. So it yeah. needs to, to be that way. At People's Capital Group, we help you invest in real estate. 
Build your wealth by owning professionally managed apartment buildings in the northern New Jersey market. We want to show you how owning real estate is attainable, even for the busy professionals that don't have the time or experience investing in real estate. Now, we only work with select people who are serious about building wealth. So find out if you qualify at peoplescapitalgroup.com. It needs to be that way. You'll be praying for a recession come 27, right? <laughs> 27, 28, correct. There you go. There you go. All right, DJ. Great. So uh, you're looking to connect with, therefore, more family offices, experienced operators. Is that right? Uh, who are you looking to connect with? Yeah, with both. I mean, we, we have one of the things we didn't talk about is is um, I had uh, developed the Family Office Real Estate Institute. It's purely education. You know, we have white papers, um, podcasts, video interviews. We have executive education classes at the University of Denver on campus and also um, virtual. We have professors from Harvard and Wharton and University of Chicago and industry people. And then, um, you know, we have a conference that we do and it's all strictly um, providing education. And it's all based around, you know, I see what you have there um, about wealth preservation. And it's also, it's all about um, maintaining the legacy and preserving wealth, which is exactly, and really there's not a better, there's not a better uh, form of investment for that right. to happen, especially with all the tax benefits that you have. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, one of the stats that you might not have heard before, but 70% of families lose their wealth by the second gen and 90% by the third gen. And yeah. so real estate's a hard asset. You can't just sell it, which is mm -hmm. great, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, just a huge believer. And, and so we provide educational information. So with a family, by all means. And then sponsors, we're always looking for, for good sponsors to review. Uh, so that as well. That's excellent. And where can people learn more about your conference and your uh, Family Office Institute there? How can they get more information on that? Yeah. So for the conference and the institute, it's at 4FORE, F -O -R -E, for Family Office Real Estate. And it's dot .institute, not dot .com. So F-O-R-E dot .institute. Okay. Um, and then they can, um, you know, uh, reach, get all the information they want about that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, the uh, uh, they can also uh, for myself go to djvankieran.com or um, at evergreenpropertypartners.com. So, uh, any way they want to or contact you, and then you let me know, and, and you know, we can go from there. But happy to be of help in any way possible. Excellent, excellent. Well, DJ, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. So, uh, that's how everyone here can get in touch to our listeners uh, to uh, contact DJ. A couple of different websites there. I'm going to check them out myself. And uh, one more time, uh, DJ, what's the what's that uh, what's that best website for you? Uh, it's for f o r e dot investments. No dot institute dot institute. There, there you go. Institute for <laughs> dot institute, not dot com, but dot institute. Institute. Okay, excellent. I'm going to definitely check that out. Thank you so much, DJ, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it for coming on the po Passive Cash Flow podcast here. And of course, to our listeners, I'm Aaron Fragnito with uh, People's Capital Group. So by the way, if you're enjoying our content, be sure to like and subscribe there on YouTube and share this. Share this with people out there who are in the wealth management space, the real estate space, you know, family offices, RIAs. This is a... Uh, area that maybe isn't talked about all that much in, in real estate. You know, I hear a lot about uh, the, the business of real estate or accredited investors, but family offices and RIAs, um, they are growing so quickly. So learning how to connect with family offices, how to build those relationships and help them preserve and build their wealth is uh, is a very important aspect of the business. So that's why I do try to bring on guests that can educate us in that space. So DJ, uh, it's been a pleasure having you on here. Thanks for coming on the show. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me and keep doing what you're doing because, you know, your mission is is, is what's going to uh, allow a lot of families to, uh, you know, continue on that legacy and their wealth for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot, DJ. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you.